Fourth grade into math lesson 19.1. Identify customary benchmarks, measurement benchmarks. I can select and use non-standard units to measure lengths, weights, and liquid volumes. Okay, so over there we have some different um, things to show us what a gallon is, what a quart is, what a pint is, what a cup is. Okay, but we've also learned how to draw our gallon G, right guys? That yeah. kind of tells us how many units of each thing are within another unit, okay? So start your learning. Choose an object in your classroom. How would you describe the size of the object to a classmate? Build understanding number one. Think about the measurements you see on a yardstick. Find objects in your classroom that have a length of about one inch, about one foot, and about one yard. Record your observation. Okay, so then we came up with some objects that would be about an inch, a foot, and a yard. Then we talked um, how could you use parts of your arm and your hand as a benchmark? We talked about how your knuckle could be used as um, a benchmark for an inch, right? And then your elbow to your wrist could be about a foot. Letter B, if you walk 20 minutes, then you have to walk about a mile. What benchmark could you use for one mile? Connect to vocabulary. A mile is a customary unit for measuring length. Liquid volume is a measure of the space a liquid occupies. Some customary units for measuring liquid volume are gallons, quarts, pints, and cups. Okay, so over here we have examples. Okay, so this is a what? Quarter or gallon. Or gallon. gallon. This, this is a uh, half gallon. Okay, we didn't just say that. But so here is our gallon. Here is our quart. This is a pint. And this is a cup. Oh. Okay, so you can see that. All of these could fit inside the gallon, correct? How many times does the quart go into the gallon? Four times. Four times. How many times does the pint go into the quart? Two times. And how many times can a cup go into a, court, um, a pint? Two. Twice. Okay. And like I said, this is also where we can draw our gallon too, right? And help us kind of nestle those inside or know how many units can go into another. So, number two, consider the objects shown and the liquid volume they can hold. Find at least one object in your classroom that you would that you think can hold a cup, a pint, a quart, and a gallon. Um, record your observation. Number three, consider the objects shown and their weight. Find at least one object in your classroom that would weigh about one ounce, one pound, or one ton. Record your observation. Weight is the heaviness of an object. Some customary units for measuring weight are ounces, pounds, and tons. Okay, so we talked about A and B, and then check your understanding. Number one, the height of a desk could be used as a benchmark. For which measurement unit would you use? So to get you there to focus and figure it out, would you use um, inches, foot, yard, or a mile? A yard. So guys, look at these desks. Okay, if I would go and get something that was a mile long, would I be having to backtrack an awful lot? Yes. If I did an inch, would I have to sit there and just keep going and going and going? Yeah. If I did a foot, it would take me a few times, but if I used a yardstick, could I tell pretty quick? Yes. yes. Use benchmarks to choose which unit you would best be to measure each. Amount of liquid in a juice box. So, would I want to use the cup, the pint, the quart, or the gallon? So, a little juice box. The cup, right? Weight of a car. This one's kind of given to you. A ton. On your own, number four, what objects in your classroom weighs more than an ounce? Okay. Number five, what do you use tons to measure a dog's weight? So yes or no? No. No, because why? Uh, dogs are small. Like because a dog is too small, right? Um, if you were going to use tons, it would have to be a really large animal, correct? Okay. So you would probably use pounds to measure a dog, right? Okay. 
Now, which unit would you use to measure a puppy? Okay, you could still use pounds. It kind of just depends on what size the dog it is, right? Okay, now if it's a little puppy that um, it can eventually be a little dog, it's probably not going to be real big, right? So could you maybe use ounces for that? I mean, could you do that? Yeah. Okay, so um, it just depends on the size and um, how big they are. All right, number six, which image represents a possible benchmark for a foot? Circle the answer, okay? So what do you guys think would probably be the foot here? The book, right? The part, you can measure it in feet, but is it going to take multiple? Yeah, okay? The refrigerator, the width of it, you can measure it in feet, but would it probably take multiple? Okay. All right, so the car and the refrigerator would probably be easily measured in yards, right? Okay, attention precision. You benchmark for length to choose the test unit you would use to measure each. The height of a man, what would you probably measure that in? 64. No, the last time, the last time is when we hear what the height of a man is, we usually hear it in what? Feet, right? That might be like six foot four. So what does that mean? Six feet, four inches, right? Okay. So yes, you would have to use the inches, but you would look at the feet first. The width of an envelope. So most envelopes, whether they're long or they're the short ones, are about this much. So what would you measure that in? Inches. Okay. The length of a bus route. So not the actual bus, but the route that the bus takes. Miles, okay. Okay. And then the width of the house. Yards, right? You can do feet, but um, is it going to take more of those than it would yards? Yeah. Okay. The complete with more or less. A bathtub holds slink water than a gallon. More. More. Okay. So you would have to probably put several of the gallons in there, right? A television weighs blank than a ton. Yes. 